hello everyone and welcome to the NFL version of ProLine. I'm John Cranton in Las Vegas, joined by Vegas experts Harvard Barnhart and Zach Simony. Going to take a look at three NFL games this weekend. First to say what we have uh, going on for the weekend. Harvard, you had one of your 10-star Two packs, one college, one high-rated NFL play, another sweep of the board this weekend. That's 14-2. and two. Congratulations. Well, thank you. 14-2, uh, and two, 87%. I, you know what? When, you, when you're hot, you're hot. And when you're not, I guess, uh, you know, there's uh, other things you can do for a job. But 14-2. and two. And I'll tell you what. You know, this is my 34th year. So maybe by now uh, I've figured it out. Uh, you know, but I've always been pretty good. But the one game that really ticked me off, you know, I started off winning Saturday with Memphis plus 10. They crushed Ole Miss. You never even had to, you know, that's a game that, you know, you're so far ahead, it's actually fun to watch. There's no sweat. You know you got it locked up. Came back with the Vikings on Sunday. and But you know what? I took all that money, and I'm just as crazy as the uh, gamblers uh, that, you know, are watching this show. I put it all on the Monday night football game over 50. In fact, you know, when we did this show last week, I was actually taking my, my phone and, and putting in a bet to get over 50 because I didn't want the line to change. So I ended up going two winners Saturday and Sunday and actually lost money for the weekend with those three big plays because I lost the juice. I just doubled up on that Monday night football game over 50. You heard it here first last week. That well, I love that the Giants play. game over Monday. I went over, I over, 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 That's over. That's bad money management. Uh, I know. It's horrible money management, but you know what? I love betting these games. And especially, and you know what? It's fun to bet a total. But uh, don't worry about a thing. We're going to have another pro line special. And by the way, there's a couple guys that emailed me when I was, I think I was 8-2. and two, And they said, well, when you have a loser, we'll join or we'll sign up or whatever they do. Uh, I'm 6-0 and oh since then. But my message is this. If you waited since last January, February, March, all through the summer, then September, and then October, and all of a sudden you're coming down to, I'll get on one game? Are you kidding me? You don't make a commitment for one game. You make a commitment for every Saturday, every Sunday, every Saturday, every Sunday, every Saturday, every Sunday. I'll be the first one to tell you, I'm going to lose a game here and there. But I'm 14-2, and two, so I have had two losses. Uh, but I've got another Pro-Line special for you guys. Saturday, I have a 10-star play. It's my knockout shocker game of the year. Coming back, NFL upset alert game of the year. There's a team right now on upset alert. So uh, some of you favorites better start practicing this week because one of you guys are going down in flames. All right, and Zach, your college football record for the season, 24 and 12, NFL 16 and 10 after a perfect 3 and 0 Sunday. Didn't quite make it to 4 and 0 because of Eli Manning on Monday night, but still stellar records all around. Yeah, you know what? NFL uh, Jim Feist was the only site that I actually released the three game package. Other sites I had bills in there too. So three and two overall, I put on my record in the NFL. But college football was four and one, um, just steadily climbing uphill. 24 and 12, 67 percent in NCAA football, and 16 and 10 in the NFL. Every week I've been 3-2 and two in the Super Contest, starting to get a little annoying as the Giants faltered for me yesterday. I thought I was going to finally have that 4-1 and one week, but hey, that's how it goes in the NFL. you gotta, you got to take, uh, take it in stride. Yeah. Grab one of my 10 stars, you'll be 4-1. <laughs> <laughs> right, Jim Feist on Thursday is going to have a college football rivalry game of the month. In fact, that is up and available now at jimfeist.com. It's Saturday, big one is college football game of the year, and it's Monday night football Game of the Year is up and available now at jimfeist.com. You can get each one of those individually, or you can call the number on your screen for a whopping discount. All right, before we get into the games, let's look back at the weekend. How about some overrated or uh, poor performances from winning teams? Uh, Hollis, who do you see as somebody having a bad weekend? Well, uh, probably the Chicago Bears because they lost to... Bad season. <laughs> ...Detroit Lions, and that's uh, that. how can you uh, celebrate that... Uh, uh, anyway, for bad, uh, let's go to the Cleveland who played, oh, the coaching, the everything decision they made stunk it up. Everything was bad. Yeah. Uh, Denver, how did they, uh, they, are they the worst 6-0 team in football? Here's what I'm going to tell you about Manning. First of all, I don't want to sit here and bash Manning. I think he's done fantastic for his whole career. I think he maybe he should have gotten out of the game last year. I hate to see him go out this year the way he does, but he's not the quarterback. Uh, you know, how do you even bench him? Uh, I, I don't know what to do with that guy, but what his problem is is when you throw under coverage, 
you have to have a real strong arm. It's not the long pass that he has a problem with. He can sit there and wind up, and he's always throwing a wobbly pass anyway, but he gets that wind up, and especially if he's uh, you know got enough time to do it, and he'll throw it long, but throwing that little quick snapper and all that stuff, he can't do that. His interceptions are going up. Uh, another thing, uh, his arm strength is, is bad. Uh, he makes good decisions, but maybe because he doesn't know what he's doing with the ball, He's got his glove on now because of the tingling in his fingers. He can't feel things. As it gets colder, he's going to get crushed. He's getting more and more interceptions. And, uh, you know, Gary Kubiak, uh, I don't know, maybe he was brought in to, uh, you know, do the dirty work for uh, Elway or something like that. But you know what? I'm here to salute Peyton Manning. I'm just not here to bet on Peyton Manning. I'm a bet against him probably for the rest of the season on almost every single game. And by the way, uh, I understand I was talking to one of the main odds makers the other day. I believe that Green Bay goes into uh, Denver, yeah. what, in two weeks? It, yeah, and also playing Carolina, another undefeated. Well, team. let me tell you this, though. The line right now is going to be Green Bay minus two. I just wish I could load up on it right now. Green Bay minus two. Let's go. Actually, it's the Bengals. So it's Denver, the Bengals, and the Packers are all going to be Well, when the Packers time, play, so. two or three weeks. It's you know, so over the next uh, couple weeks, that's right. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell Denver's you right going. now, I'll bet you the Lions not minus two in three weeks. Well, I agree with you about Peyton Manning. I watched that game against Cleveland. Boy, he was terrible. Talk about a team trying to hand the game. I mean, as, as a Cleveland Browns fan, how do you pick off Peyton Manning three times in your own building and you don't blow the other team out of the water? I thought everything was terrible in that game, mm -hmm. coaching decisions. In the overtime, they one of the picks – they had the ball in Denver territory. Three plays later, it's fourth and 28 with the Cleveland offense. That was very frustrating. Well, you know, one of the things about that uh, with Manning, uh, I mean, with the whole uh, Broncos team, 57% of their scores are coming from, from the, the kicker or the defense. 57%. Now, here's a guy two years ago threw for over 50 touchdown passes and 5,000 yards. Two years later, or basically a, a year and a quarter later, 57% uh, of the scoring, if they can get some, is the defense. Yeah. So Can they keep that up? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's a uh, that's plan on that. Yeah, they're going to keep that up. Well, Zach, do you have a bonehead of the war to week? Well, uh, Chuck Pagano almost cost me a win <laughs> with his play calls and selections. I mean, you're the head coach. You have to know when and to pull out those tricks. And then at home against Bill Belichick, as he said, Bill Belichick's ready for any play possible. He's not going to let you win off a gimmick play. You know, I almost had that onside kick. I thought they should have had it, but they tried one too many. I thought the fourth and goal, they they, can, they caught that with a jump pass, uh, improbable catch. Then they try the onside kick. Then you try that fake punt. That was one too many. And, you know, I'm, everyone's calling for his head right now. And, and if you look at it, really since Bruce Arians has left, when he... Uh, he, he coached that year when um, Pagano had the cancer treatments. Since Arians has left, that Colts team hasn't been the same, and I think it's getting pretty close to the time where maybe we have to uh, give uh, Chuck Pagano his exit papers. I know Jim Mercy really hasn't been in the limelight since uh, he had his own issues of his own. He's kind of just been managing from afar in the front office, but I think Jim's going to have to step in like it's the 1982 again. Ursa, after that play, Ursi might be joining Johnny Manziel in treatment centers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, that was not very good on Pagano's part, if you're watching that. There are some problems uh, league-wide, uh, actually. All right, let's get, into, uh, let's get into an AFC East battle on Sunday. Great one here is the Jets and the Patriots squaring off with first place at stake. The Jets have been somewhat of a surprise at 4-1 straight up in ATS, although not if you watched this show back in August. That was one of the teams we had out as being uh, better than people expected as well as covering numbers. And here they are uh, playing exceptionally well, number one in the NFL in defense. You get Darrell Rivas, a newcomer, and they're terrific against uh, the run and the pass as well. Top three in the NFL coming off that whipping of Washington, 34-20 to with a huge edge in yards including 221 yards rushing. That's their operandi on offense is Chris Ivory at 146 yards rushing. So Harvard's Jets team is playing great. Are they going to get, uh, you think, an A grade after this one or maybe a, a D grade? I don't know how to grade either one of these teams. Uh, you know what? I've never liked New England Patriots, so it's hard for me to handicap. Seems like we talk about them every week on the show. And, I mean, what can you say about them? 
Brady, he's had 14 touchdown passes, one intercepted. He's throwing 71%. Oh, does it get any better? Uh, Amendola and Edelman, well, how are you going to defend against them? You still got Gronk. Uh, then they find this new tight end, uh, Scott Chandler. Uh, then you can throw in a running back, Deion Lewis, which is getting five yards per carry. Uh, or if you're not doing it on offense, can you do it on defense? Well, uh, you got to do one or the other. Uh, they're, they're fantastic every side of the ball. Even the field goal kicker is number one in the NFL with 19 straight uh, field goals. Uh, if you're going to beat New England, I think you're going to have to do it with uh, against the run. Uh, they're 22nd against the run defense. Uh, for the Jets, uh, they got Chris Ivory, but can he be their only answer? Uh, I think so, maybe. You know, quarterback uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, he's just uh, an average guy, nine touchdowns, seven interceptions, but this guy can get you in trouble. And I don't know if he's going to be allowed to get anybody in trouble. The one thing I've noticed about the coaching staff is on the halftime adjustments, they're capable of keeping you in the game and getting you back in the game. But this year in halftime adjustments, they come out and uh, in the third quarter, they've outperformed uh, their opposition 34 to nothing. So they've gotten off to the right start. They've got it re-motivated. So when you're taking plus nine, 10 points, and believe me, 80% of all bets on the New England uh, Indianapolis game came in on New England. And thank God for that last cover or else the bookmakers would have been jumping off Hoover Dam, so uh, they didn't get the cover there, and Jets uh, traditionally play the Pats tough, so I guess I'm going to have to stab the Jets and take the plus 10 points. Yeah, the Patriots do have uh, some sizzling numbers, not just on the offensive end, but against the spread, 11-4 ATS against a winning team, 13-7-1 and one spread run overall. They're 35-16-2 and two ATS in October. The one concern with this team, though, would be the injuries piling up, particularly on this offensive line. It's really been uh, devastated. So, Zach, you know, is that going to be a concern against a gang green? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, the <laughs> Patriots right now, they've got so much, so much going for them. And we just talked about it, the coaching advantage that Bill Belichick has right now. You're seeing all these new coaches. You know, Miami just got that new interim head coach. Todd Bowles, new head coach. Um, there's new coaches throughout this NFL, and Bill Pelichick has been doing it for so long, you can't rule out his advantage that he has. And Ryan Fitzpatrick, you know, went to my high school and everything like that, been following him his whole career, but he's just not capable of winning this type of game. He, he fades in these type of games, and when he when he throws that first pick, he usually follows it up with another one, then another one, then another one, and it goes on and on and on. And... I think his weapons, he's been get, he's been doing all right with Brandon Marshall, Eric Decker back last week, but I just don't know how long both those guys are older, especially Brandon Marshall. I don't know how long Brandon Marshall can be a number one wide receiver in his veteran age. And I'm just, this definitely won't be a play that I give out when I have my premium plays, but uh, for the purpose of the show, I would take the Patriots. So you're looking for Fitzpatrick to show, throw some turnovers, get behind 14 nothing, then they have to pass all the time. Yeah, I mean, That's not what they want to do. Yeah, the Patriots... All season long, I mean, you can't go against them. The only game that they let up offensively was against the Steelers week one. You know, their week two against uh, Jacks or Buffalo, they blew them out. Jacksonville, they blew them out. Last week, they could have blown out the Colts. They blew out Dallas. Uh, I just don't see how Ryan Fitzpatrick can get it done. How did you and uh, Fitzpatrick match up on your SATs? Yeah. <laughs> that, that was the first thing. You know, let's let's talk about that. I know how I did with against uh, versus him, but uh, did you yes. ever throw some blitzes at him too? You... Oh no, I'm, uh, he, he's bigger body than me, so I, uh, I think we were in some uh, trivia bowl back in high school. Uh, he beat me in that, so there I mean, we go. Sports he did trivia. Go to Harvard, so. Uh... <laughs> No, uh, no cause in losing to a guy who goes to Harvard in a trivia <laughs> contest. Uh, we're going to get a, a good test here with this Jets defense. Is it for real? Well, I think it is for real based on the talent and the numbers. And I think they're going to give the Patriots a, a difficult time, particularly on that offensive line. Can't see the Pats running at all, so you're going to see Brady throw 50 times. They're more than capable of beating a great defense, too, by doing that, as we saw in the Super Bowl where they basically threw the short pass every time. That's the one weakness with the Jets defense is linebackers and pass coverage is something – that the Patriots with their coaching staff and Brady can't exploit. However, I'm going to look at a defensive game here because I think the Jets can hold the Patriots to about 20 points, maybe 23. And the Patriots' defense is quietly very impressive. A lot of young talent, top first-round picks. They, they have drafted. We saw Damian Easley, uh, Monday, uh, Sunday night game. 
Jamie Collins jumped over a guy to block <laughs> a, a, a extra point. This guy's just uh, incredible. That was play. cool. <laughs> yeah. And then Chandler Jones, they really have a lot of young defense, and the secondary is better and younger than a lot of people expected. So I'm going to look at uh, a defensive game here under the total.